Imagine a wire stretched tightly. Now the wire experiences some tension. If it is stretched too much, the wire may break due to excessive tension. The same thing may even happen to our overhead transmission lines. While erecting a transmission line, it is very important that the conductors are under safe tension. Therefore, the conductors are not fully stretched but are allowed to have a dip or sag. Hi, I am Benila. In this video, I am going to talk about the sag in transmission lines. The vertical distance between the highest point of the electrical pole or tower where the conductor is connected and the lowest point of the conductor is known as the sag. The horizontal distance between two towers is called the span. The length of the conductor used will be more if the sag is more. This obviously increases the cost. So overall it is very clear that the transmission line should not be tied too tightly or too loosely. The sag should be adjusted so that the conductor's tension is within the safe limits. Now you might have understood the importance of SAC in the mechanical design of overhead transmission lines. The transmission lines take the shape of a catenary. The catenary in mathematics is a curve that describes the shape of a hanging chain. Here the whole body should have a uniform weight. For example, in this case, it is not catenary. Here the weight over here is higher than the other regions due to the presence of this locket. However, if you remove this locket, now it's a catenary because the weight is uniform. In our case, the weight is uniform throughout the length of the conductor. Let's consider the weight per unit length of the conductor as W and L be the span. The tension at any point on the conductor adds tangentially. Let's first calculate the sag when the supports are at an equal level. Let's name the lowest point on the conductor as O and the sag as S. Consider a point P on the conductor. Taking the lowest point O as the origin, let the coordinates of point P be X and Y. The two forces acting on the portion OP of the conductor are the weight of the conductor acting at the center and the tension T acting at the O. Here we have selected a small length OP. Therefore the curvature will be very small. So we can assume that the curve length will be almost equal to the length OP which is X. This means the distance between the center point and the point O is X by 2. The weight Per unit length of the conductor is W. Since the length of this small portion OP is X, the weight of this part of the conductor will be W multiplied by X. Here the conductor is in an equilibrium state. Therefore, the moments of the force above the point O will be equal. We know that the moment is force multiplied by perpendicular distance. Equating the moments, we get Ty is equal to Wx multiplied by x by 2. This means y is equal to Wx squared divided by 2t. Now, if we extend our point P to point B, then the coordinates x and y will be L by 2 and S. Here, S represents the sag. So, if we substitute these x and y values in our equation, we will get our sag equation. S is equal to WL square divided by 8T. This sag equation is applicable only when the supports are at an equal level. In hilly areas, we generally come across conductors suspended between supports at unequal levels. Now let's calculate the sag in this case. Let the lowest point on the conductor is O. S1 and S2 are the sags, L be the span, H is the difference in level between two supports, X1 is the distance of support at the lower level from O 
and X2 is the distance of support at higher level from O. T is the tension in the conductor and W is the weight per unit length of the conductor. If we consider our point P to be at point A, then the X and Y coordinates will be X1 and S1. If we substitute it in our previous equation, we will get our SAC S1. Similarly, if we consider our point P to be at point B, then X and Y coordinates will be X2 and S2. If we substitute these coordinates in our equation, we will get SAC S2. In these two SAG equations, the values x1 and x2 are unknown. We need these two values to find the exact value of the SAGs. We know that x1 plus x2 is the span L and s2 minus s1 is the difference in levels between two supports H. Let's substitute our s1 and s2 values in this equation. We know that x2 square minus x1 square can be written as x2 plus x1 into x2 minus x1. By substituting the x2 plus x1 value as L, we will get our equation for H. From here we can find x2 plus x1. Now we have x2 plus x1 equation and x2 minus x1 equation. We can get our x2 and x1 values by solving these two equations. Once you know these values, the SAGs S1 and S2 can be calculated easily. These S1 and S2 formulae are true only in still air and at normal temperature. However, in actual practice, the conductors may have ice coating and are simultaneously subjected to wind pressure. The weight of the ice coated conductor will surely be higher than the weight of the conductor at normal temperature. So in order to get our exact value of SAC, we need to include the weight of the ice as well as the effect of the wind. The weight of the ice acts vertically downwards in the same direction as the weight of the conductor. The force due to the wind is assumed to act horizontally at the right angle to the projected surface of the conductor. Let's consider our resultant vector to be Wt. The magnitude of this resultant weight of the conductor per unit length is the square root of W plus Wi the whole square plus WW square. So, while calculating the SAG, Instead of the weight of conductor per unit length, we have to use this resultant weight per unit length of the conductor. That's all for today. Bye. See you in my next video.